Addressing the UN General Assembly, Al Muallim refers to some UN Security Council members who support terrorism in Syria. People's Assembly Speaker found that Saudi measures to prevent Syrians from performing pilgrimage are aim at dealing the blow to Syria's steadfastness and stability. Our armed forces continue to confront terrorists in Aleppo, Homs, Damascus suburbs, and there are inflicting on them heavy losses. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our news for today. Syria has affirmed at the UN General Assembly its intention to continue work with all patriotic parties and their position for the sake of building a new Syria where pluralism prevails and its full determination to do its duties and protect its people from takfiri terrorism. Head of the Syrian delegation, Foreign and Expatriates Minister Walid al muallim expressed that the ongoing military, financial, and media support for terrorism is another practical interpretation of the concept of creative chaos which enhances Western hegemony on the state of the region. In a statement at the UN General Assembly, Foreign and Expatriates Minister Walid al muallim said the world is living under the weight of intervention practiced by certain states in the affairs of other countries, as the former keep beating the drums of war and spreading sedition at the pretext of humanitarian interference and launching wars under the cover of combating terrorism, which they support in Syria. Al Muallim stressed that Syria faces organized terrorism against its citizens and establishments, supported by foreign sites which incite, finance, and arm religious extremism. He added that Syria would not be surprised if the UN Security Council failed to condemn such terrorism as some of its member states supported. This reality made me wonder, Mr. al muallim added, if international agreement on combating terrorism represents a serious commitment or is nothing but mere words on paper. The irony that we face is that the extremists inside and outside countries in this region are being encouraged to head towards Syria's borders as well as to areas inside Syria to carry out terrorist acts under the so-called jihad in cooperation with terrorists in the inside. Mr. al muallim added. The foreign minister pointed out that Syria has called for dialogue since the beginning of the crisis without any response from most of the opposition's factions and has responded to every sincere initiative in helping find a peaceful solution based on dialogue. Mr. al muallim voiced Syria's belief in a political solution to get out of the crisis. He called on all parties and factions inside and outside Syria to hold a constructive dialogue. He affirmed that Syria's doors and hearts are open for anyone who wants constructive dialogue and that the agreed upon results of such national dialogue would be its future roadmap and plan in establishing a more plural and democratic Syria. Al Muallim concluded his statement affirming that the Syrian people are the ones who should choose their own future and the form of their state and leadership through the ballot boxes. He stressed Syria's adherence to its national rights in recovering the occupied Golan in full and to the legitimate recognition of an independent Palestinian state, adding that rendering the Middle East an area void of weapons of mass destruction cannot be realized without compelling Israel to join the nuclear arms non-proliferation treaty and subjugate its installations to international supervision. Deputy Prime Minister, Foreign Minister and Exp uh, Expatriates Minister Walid al met in New York with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and discussed with him cooperation between Syria and the UN on all fields. The two sides reviewed the efforts exerted by the UN in Syria in the humanitarian field and the mission of UN envoy to Syria Al-Akhdar Al-Ibrahimi. They also discussed means of developing this cooperation to facilitate the Brahimi's mission being hindered by those sides which are arming, training, and financing the armed terrorist groups. The two sides called for halting violence on all sides to launch a national dialogue among the Syrian people to overcome the current situation. 
The Russian Foreign Ministry has called on NATO and regional states to stop searching for pretexts for foreign intervention in Syria or for setting up buffer zones and humanitarian passages, reiterating support for a political solution to the crisis in Syria. The Russian Deputy Foreign Minister, Gennady Gatilov, said there are known examples in the region that have proved that the policy of bombs would never lead to the required results. On the contrary, it would shake up the security of those countries as well as in the region as a whole. Gatilov referred to increasing numbers of hardliners among the ranks of the Syrian opposition and the possibility for those to commit provocative acts and stir up conflicts on the borders. In New York, Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez Barria found that the U.S. and other European countries are seeking to topple the Syrian government by supporting armed terrorist groups in Syria. He pointed out in his word delivered during the U.N. General Assembly meetings that the U.S. and its European allies are supporting these groups by sending them money and setting up training camps for them in addition to facilitating the flow of terrorists into Syria. The People's Assembly today held the first session of its secondary ordinary term, headed by Assembly Speaker Dr. Muhammad Jihad al -Laham. Dr. al affirmed that the opening session that the Saudi authorities' measures and preventing Syrian citizens from performing pilgrimage this year are part of their plan to deal blow to Syria's steadfastness and stability. He called on all parliaments and the world which claim to be keen on the Syrian people to pressure their governments that support, embrace, and send terrorists to Syria to stop their intervention in Syria's internal affairs. On his part, Prime Minister Wael Halaki affirmed that the Syrian Arab army is the only guarantee for homeland safety and stability, and that it has all the support of the government and its confrontation of terrorism and those who back it. The Prime Minister added that Syria pays the price for its stance and being pressured to deviate from the track of reform it pursues. The Council of Ministers, headed by Prime Minister Wael Halaki, highlighted today the 39th anniversary of Tishreen Liberation War, which is considered a distinguished accomplishment of the correctionist movement led by the late President Hafez Assad. The Council praised the bravery of the Syrian Arab army, which is confronting the conspiracy on Syria, inflicting heavy losses on the armed terrorist groups. Afterwards, the Cabinet discussed a number of draft laws revolving on economic and service issues, approving some of them. The Prime Minister listened to a briefing by Minister of State for National Reconciliation, Dr. Ali Haider, on the efforts exerted by the Ministry and on the results of conferences held by their position last week aimed at opening the door for a political solution to the crisis in Syria. The Syrian Arab army continued to clear the city of Aleppo and its countryside of terrorists, inflicting heavy casualties on them. An army unit raided terrorist hideouts in Kermil Jabal and the area of Kalak in Aleppo countryside. It also destroyed three factories where explosives and grenades were being made, and three Doshka carriers along with two vans and two gunmen carriers. Another army unit eliminated an armed terrorist group that was hiding behind the fields along the road of Aleppo airport, seizing their weapons. In Damascus countryside, an army unit seized today a truck loaded with 30 explosive devices and other materials used for preparing explosives in the area of Duma farms. Authorities also found a factory for preparing explosive devices in Harasta farms. Earlier, the Syrian Arab army had eliminated one of the most dangerous terrorist groups while searching the farms of Duma and Harasta. Authorities found a terrorist hideout full of weapons, including 
an Israeli made machine gun Uzi type. An army unit also destroyed a pickup provided with Bushka, killing all the terrorists inside in the fields surrounding Harasta and Damascus countryside. And Homs army units continued to pursue fleeing armed groups, killing and wounding a number of gunmen in Bab Hood neighborhood. A number of terrorists were killed by car bomb explosion when they were preparing to launch a terrorist attack in the border town of Nasib and Dara countryside. Sana correspondent quoted a source and the governorate as saying that Fawaz Mustafa Faluji was identified as being among the terrorists killed. As they persist in targeting public properties and schools and spreading panic among students to prevent them from continuing their education, an armed terrorist group attacked this morning the preparatory school in Burak's village in Lejak province and there are northern suburbs. Sana's correspondent quoted a source and the governorate as saying that seven terrorists attacked the school and opened fire to terrify students and teachers. They kidnapped student Hisham Khaled al-Hilal in the 8th grade, son of al-Jamalat tribe's chief, known for his participation in the national reconciliation efforts. Within the same context, the source said that a terrorist group attacked this morning the commercial secondary school in Jassim City, setting fire to 600 liters of diesel and burning some classes. With this, we end our news bulletin for today. For more information about Syria and the region, you can visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Up next, the latest business of market news with Vani after the break. <laughs>